Hey, good morning friends. I'm glad you decided to join me to get this day started with the biblical perspective. So happy Monday and here we go. Hey ladies, so for the next two weeks, we're going to spend our time breaking down 1 Peter 1, 3 through 11. I decided to call this series The Qualities of a Mature Calling. Basically, we're going to go through and break down some of these attributes that Peter lists out of a mature person living in their calling and just kind of get down to the nitty gritty. So 1 Peter 1, 3 through 11 says, Confirm your calling and election. His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us his own into his own glory and excellence, by which he has granted us his precious and very great promises, so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is the world because of sinful desire. For this reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue, your virtue with knowledge, your knowledge with self-control, your self-control with steadfastness, and steadfastness with godliness, and godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love. For if these qualities are yours, you are increasing. They are keeping you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's a lot to break down in a small passage. Peter lays out the qualities that we should be maturing in as a result of our calling. Growing in our calling as a believer requires intention, so let's focus on the first quality. Make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue. First, what is faith? In Hebrews 11.1 1, it says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Having faith results in living in assurance of hope. Faith in Jesus Christ is what separates Christians from other people. This is the foundation for all other qualities in a Christian life. Second, what is virtue? According to the dictionary, it's behavior showing high moral standards or living in moral excellence. Now, I'm sure we've all heard the phrase virtue signaling. Let me assure you, submitting to the most popular public opinion to appear better than others through mimicking what culture has told you is of high value is not the same thing of being a person of virtue. I would like to put it like this. A virtuous woman is someone who prudently applies scripture into her daily situation and makes decisions using a biblical high moral standard. So the first qualities of a mature calling look like this. Actively living in assurance of our hope we have in Christ in tandem with practically applying high moral biblical standards in our daily scenarios. Does this sound impossible? Let's circle back to verse 3. His divine power has granted to all of us things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence. Peter is saying all believers have been granted to a life of godliness and Christ-likeness. However, it is attainable through the knowledge of God who called us into his own glory. These qualities are not ones we can simply put on like a Tootsie Roll flavored lip smackers or a Bon Bon lip gloss. These are divine qualities that we can attain through a new life God has given us through Jesus' death and resurrection. Being a new Christian in Christ allows us to grow in the knowledge of God through the biblical understanding, thus resulting in an active and maturing spiritual life. Through his moral excellence and divine power, we can start the step towards making every effort to supplement our faith with virtue. Peter also reminds us, by which he has granted to us his precious and very great promises, so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desire. Through our new birth in Christ, we can partake in God's divine nature. Through the Holy Spirit, he will lead us, help us, guide us, and grow us. So as we dive into the qualities of a mature calling, remember, all this is foundational through God's divine power. It doesn't just rely on you. It doesn't. Yes, making lunches for the next day, or meal prepping dinner, or that deadline at work, or scrubbing the bathroom. That may rely on you, but this doesn't. We have God's divine power to rely on. As believers, we are active participants in this nature. You have help. 
what a relief. So this Monday, start with a first step, faith with virtue. Actively living in assurance of your hope we have in Christ in tandem with practically applying high moral biblical standards in daily scenarios. So how are you doing, friend? Are you feeling tired like this is another thing you have to add into your already cluttered to-do list anxious filled mind? My prayer for you in the chaos of the day is remember, your foundation is in Christ and it's solid. Start there. Or maybe you're feeling like this season is filled with the Lord's assurance of your faith for you. I rejoice. It's truly amazing to be able to stand back and recognize where the Lord has been working. But wherever you are, friend, this is something for you to reflect on. Are you intentionally maturing in your calling? Is your faith resulting in assurance of hope? Are you allowing that hope to impact your daily reactions? And is your day-to-day mind focused on what you can do or what God's divine nature can do through you? Thanks for listening, friends. Talk to you soon.